Thanks for coming down. I'd like to uh, welcome you to my seminar of um, the topic Equitable Education Outcomes for Indigenous Australians. Uh, over the next 20 minutes, so I, I've taken through um, some of the issues and pro problems and the plans that I have in place as a new teacher to help myself combat these. these. Um, the issue is um, the disproportionate rate of unemployment among Indigenous Australians can result to uh, little or no literacy and numeracy expressed by handling. Education and governing bodies are currently uh, beginning to implement specific initiatives um, aimed at increasing educational outcomes uh, for Indigenous people. Um, evidence shows that Australian Aboriginals fall under the category of one of the most education, educationally disadvantaged populations in the country. This experience, they experience low, li uh, low life expectancy and experience um, poor health. This would just suggest that the educational outcomes of Aboriginal students has far to improve with traditional teaching methods of the Western culture. Such injustice, <coughs> I believe, can be described as follows, best described as follows. A socially just society is an environment where individuals share responsibilities for one another, uh, for one another based on principles of fairness and equality. <coughs> Equal opportunity, opportunity to succeed in life is essential. With so, uh, what social justice aims to ensure for all individuals. Many social justice definitions share the same principle for fairness and equality. Clear evidence for every young Australian is achieving equitable educational outcomes and is fundamental factor supporting a socially just society. Race, religion, education. <coughs> educational opportunities, culture, age, gender, disability and equity are all common barriers that teachers may encounter throughout their professional careers and will be required to overcome them. Not only will teachers need the knowledge to understand pedagogical practices for, for equitable, fair, flexible and authentic learning environments, but they will need to, the knowledge to implement these, implement these practices as well. Newly qualified teachers like myself may face common obstacles. Could Jack McAnally please report to Student Services? Jack McAnally. Like they're limited uh, to no experience in working in rural or remote schools <coughs> that may have many Indigenous students enrolled. Theorised by many, for teachers to gain a knowledge of understand on understanding why this gap exists in the educational outcomes of Indigenous children is, first in it, is the first initial step before any action can be initiated. A daunting task for newly qualified teachers or even experienced teachers with limited knowledge and experience in this area <coughs> excuse me, as the issues affecting Indigenous communities can be interrelated and may negatively influence multiple areas of their life. Governments and educational bodies have targeted the complex issues for Indigenous children living, in, inter, living at the interface of the two distinctly different cultures, Western and their own. This is only a relatively recent development. For Indigenous students to recover a sense of self and achieve desired educational outcomes, a standard pedagogical practice approach to Indigenous cultures has to systematically be adapted. Educational outcomes for Indigenous students may have many links with professional standards for teachers to achieve equality. This is specific, this is specific to the issue relevant to standards. Uh, so professional knowledge, understand uh, how students learn. Students with diverse linguistic, ling cultural, religious and socio-economic backgrounds, strategies for teaching Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island students, differentiate teaching to meet specific learning needs of students across the full range of abilities, understand and respect Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to promote reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. Professional practice, use teaching strategies, evaluate and improve teaching programs and Comply with legislative, administrative, and organisational requirements. Remote 
different locations that Indigenous students often reside may be a contributing factor in influencing the statistics. Sadly, the lack of funding and support in relation to educational infrastructure significantly affects many remote communities. Statistics shown in the slide indicate how widespread the issue is in Australia. As indicated here, attendance rates for non-Indigenous students is much higher than Indigenous students' attendance rate. This may result due to multiple reasons. As indicated in the Bureau of Statistics document, in the Northern Territory, every dollar spent by the government in educating a student, only 47% spent educating a child in remote Indigenous communities. The low level of education obtained by parents and carers may be a reason for statistics in this slide that indicates 60% of Indigenous children are directly behind <coughs> non-Indigenous students in the time, by the time they're in grade one. The very small amount of Indigenous teachers is exacerbated, exacerbated by 25% of Australian teachers who felt they had limited to no further professional development opportunities to gain skills in Aboriginal education and thus avoid placements in rural and remote communities. The teachers who came from an Indigenous background represent a small portion. However, they often are very successful with regards to improving educational outcomes of the Indigenous child due to their intimate knowledge and understanding of the culture. It has been widely accepted regardless of any political stance that standardised teaching methods of the Western cultures have far to improve educational outcomes for Indigenous students. Aboriginal Education Consulting Group, commonly referred to as the AECG, as a result provide relevant state education partners with information regarding Aboriginal children's needs educationally and how the community believes these issues can be addressed. Argued by Noel Pearson, a prominent Aboriginal, Australian Aboriginal theorist, that pre perceptive identifying policies impede the <coughs> educational outcome of Indigenous students and decrease their ability to engage effectively within the community outside of their own. To assist teachers and educators, the AECG provide a framework of resources that are culturally appropriate and may help effective links within key learning areas identified by the Department of Education and Training. Prior to 1990, an agreed recognition framework was originally composed. The materials relating to the Aboriginal people were stereotypical and generalised information. Employing a one-dimensional teaching approach as described by Wigan and McTighe, fails to recognise the specific learning needs for each individual, thus setting the student up to encounter many problems in society that they may be unable to overcome. Aboriginal education and training policies, policy, commonly known as AETP, informs us on literature relevant to the educational needs of Indigenous people. The policy identifies the traditional Western culture teaching methods failed to engage Indigenous students closing the achievement gap of Indigenous students so they match the educational outcomes, thus the broader student population is the goal of the policy. It is essential Indigenous students can distinguish clearly <coughs> between what they are learning and why they are learning. This is, may result in an increase in student motivation and the level of information retained. This would require teachers to step outside the box, so to speak, and away from standardised teaching practices that will more than likely be implemented in metropolitan areas. Implementation of authentic learning and assessment strategies is the common consensus. Not only will it simultaneously increase student engagement, but will also help improve achievement levels. When working with the Indigenous students, authenticity should directly inform the planning, teaching and learning proceed process as it challenges students to use their knowledge to efficiently perform and find solutions creatively to, to situations they may encounter in the real world. Identifying the need for teachers to establish and maintain supportive learning environments was a fundamental factor of the art, of, in a number of articles. Understanding various cultures, economic and social influences that may affect the lives of Indigenous students is required. So to overcome issues associated with teaching Indigenous students, as a graduate teacher, I believe the following strategies put forth in the following slides will best assist me in doing so. 
I will gather any information pertaining to the school and the community I will be working. Relevant policies and legislations that will relate to educating Indigenous students. And I will work to attain a comprehensive understanding of them. As to the specific information regarding students at the school, more than likely will be unavailable to access until I commence work teaching at the school. On a roll, I will seek out members of the school and community and members of the general public in order to gain as much, gain much knowledge possible into specific workings of the community itself and the school community to try and understand the learning environment. In doing this, I believe it will help me develop a cultural awareness of the community and my future students. This would help to better equip me with a greater understanding of the cultural and social expectations I may encounter as a graduate teacher. A key component of the plan is that my students receive the same quality and culturally appropriate learning resources. Differentiating my teaching to achieve this is vital. Flexibility and fairness when working with Indigenous students is a vital and effective pedagogical practice. Practices are key to achieving this. All aspects of my pedagogical practices will re with regard to the design and implementation of the learning and assessment tasks require careful consideration. The plan identifies the need for teachers to be open to exploring all avenues with regards to learning opportunities. Indigenous children often have a feeling of apprehension towards assessment tasks. That's why placing emphasis on dimensions of learning abilities as opposed to results obtained under examination conditions may require to be more beneficial. Regardless of ethnicity, socioeconomic backgrounds, or gender, fairness will ensure all students have equal opportunities to demonstrate their skills and knowledge on the assessment tasks. Flexibility, a fundamental learning approach, as stated in the Aboriginal Education and Training Policy, enables effective learning pathways. Students will have the opportunity by flexible learning and assessment tasks to choose learning activities learning activities um, that cater for diverse learning needs of students look, it relies on the principle of fairness and flexibility and relies heavily on teacher ability to successfully implement it. Often questioning in Anglo Australian classrooms is utilised to establish students' understanding. This is an Indigenous student uh, this to an Indigenous student may be confronting. Examples could be direct questions being with why or how, where or how. As a new graduate teacher to the community, I would seek help from experienced colleagues within the school to determine the most appropriate form of questioning that is specific to the classroom and students. This pedagogical approach may help to overcome or aid any challenges associated with teaching Indigenous students with regards to questioning in the classroom. Assessing learning material and activities to determine appropriateness is a key element of the plan and is something that needs to be continually looked at. By using a framework of questions provided by the Australian Educational Policy <coughs> could be a way to achieve this. Questions may include, does the material use appropriate terminology? Are stereotypical or racist connotations present? Does the material provide a balance of views in its accounts of a particular history or histories? Does the material address issues of social justice? Does the material give a balanced view of Aboriginal society in regards to traditional and contemporary cultural practice? And finally, is the diversity of Aboriginal societies and cultures acknowledged? Engaging actively with members of the local community, especially the elders outside of school hours, I feel will greatly assist in my in me establishing positive personal relationships within the community and therefore ultimately assist in the classroom. I believe trialling the plan for a, a semester would be an appropriate amount of time, during which the monitoring of Indigenous students' academic process could, be, could serve as a good indicator <coughs> of progress and see if a trusted student-teacher relationship has developed due to day-to-day -day interactions. Any strategies that prove effective will obviously maintain, be maintained indefinitely. Regular collaboration with my colleagues, especially those with many years of experience,
experience can only assist me in gaining new strategies to further improve the education outcomes of my Indigenous students. Having no experience working with Indigenous students, a fundamental strength of the plan is to have a theoretical understanding of principles related to Indigenous education before entering the classroom environment. Employing a number of different learning strategies will help me to determine uh, what works and what doesn't. Employing a flexible approach to my pedagogical practices within a classroom will help me to adapt to student learning needs. Proactive recognition of individual learning needs and cultural differences of my students acts as an additional strength in the plan. Barlington acknowledges that it may take time to establish positive relationships with my students, and as they often shy away from unfamiliar faces, unfamiliar people. Having no experience implementing a range of behaviour management strategies appropriate in an Indigenous community and how I would react when witnessing harsh realities the Indigenous communities face, may face are all factors that may contribute to my ability to implement the plan. My plan. I believe I have a number of strategies and concepts that I've obtained that may be effective in various teaching environments. The plan provides me with the opportunity to develop my pedagogical practice in the area I have no experience at all. The plan, however, has many threats that may affect the success of the plan. This may include ins insufficient support from staff, school staff, parents and members of the community. High absenteeism common among Indigenous students may also pose a threat to the plan. I understand that continually engaging in regular reflective practices, especially as a newly graduated teacher, will greatly improve my pedagogical practices. I have no practical experience whatsoever in the area of education, or this area of education. However, this process has opened my mind to further investigation as a result, and as a result, helped me understand the issues facing Indigenous students and their education. This process has helped me identify and examine the issue I believe to be of extreme importance um, into sustaining social justice. I was and still am apprehensive as to how I would cope teaching students, Indigenous students in a remote Indigenous community, but I feel I have better equipped myself with the possibility of being able to teach in these Indigenous communities. All right. Do we have any questions? Yeah, mate. Yeah. Um, you said at the start that there are some government initiatives aimed at yeah. increasing the educational outcomes. What, what okay, so some of those are is um, they have vocational training uh, and development programs where uh, they look at career preferences, some of the kids in the career path and develop a career path for them. Okay, so a lot of practical, uh, there's a lot of practical in that. Uh, another one is that they have this um, it's a incentive uh, learning and support program where they uh, can do additional academic um, support outside of the um, original curriculum. Um, and it's, it's, like, it's an intensive literacy and numeracy program but they do in school or outside of school, a homework club. Uh, they they start to implement a lot of uh, parent, student parent engagement, um, which is like a lot of revolves around a lot of sport, media, camps, artwork, excursions, and it's the hope that uh, involving them in the school community and um, will hopefully decrease the ab absenteeism that they have. And the other one is involving parents in the decision making in the school. So they have, and that way they can also um, bring their culturally, they're very culturally aware of obviously the Indigenous community, so they can make sure that, that uh, culturally, these kids are getting um, the support that they need and the educational outcomes that they need. So, uh, yeah, you uh, spoke earlier about attendance being an issue for Indigenous students. So I'm wondering how you might uh, had, you might approach uh, uh, addressing absenteeism for Indigenous students. Okay, so for myself, I, what I would hope to do would be to involve myself in the community as much as possible. Especially when my students, especially the ones that are absent, but all of my students attend like community functions and stuff like that, just to give them the like to show them that I'm actually interested and invested in 
learning about the community, and I'm not just here to have a job or anything like that. I'm hoping that, that they see me in that um, environment and being interested in the actual culture and the community, it might help them to want them to be in class. Also, I would try to get a feel of what their home life's like, so chatting to the parents in the, at these events and just trying to, to determine, like, to understand what their home life's like, their culture, and maybe get a gauge of why they're missing class or being absent due to that. So that's how I'll go about it. Cool. You spoke about the ACG. Would you be able to give us a bit more information about the initiatives or programs being implemented or what? Okay, so some of the programs that they offer is one is called Connecting the Country. Uh, and it's a five day um, professional development for principals or new uh, graduate teachers or just new teachers to the community where they go take you through uh, appropriate um, relationships and questioning towards Aboriginal students so you're not like so you actually engage them correctly in, in accordance with their culture. And another one is um, it's local schools, local decision. So it involves the actual school students making decisions about the school and not just having like so they have input on what happens in the school and what's happening in the school. And another one is it's called connected communities and that's all about um, setting up community as a uh, as community hubs and it's involving uh, the community itself and the school leaders uh, to influence a broader like, a learning environment for them. And it, the community itself can provide relevant like, uh, practices and information about the community relevant to the students and their learning outcomes. So the ones that I know about. Yeah, yeah look, I've, got, I've got a question, probably in two parts. Yep. Um, what's the representation of the Indigenous teachers in Australia? And what might the Australian government do to increase that? Okay, so if I remember correctly, it's about 1% of teachers in Australia are Indigenous. So it works out to be about approximately 1,970 teachers in Australia. Um, so I think offering, um, well, this is getting once they finish school, I think some uh, government for like funding uh, incentives, like offering full scholarships or partial scholarships. Um, we're offering more money to universities to implement programs that support in, um, Indigenous students on campus, whether that be additional um, like learning support. Um, and I think like if uh, some maybe some financial incentives as well to hopefully that will um, want them to stay in. Because as I said earlier, that um, the small proportion of Indigenous teachers that we actually have are uh, really good at, at getting good results um, and increasing the educational outcomes of Indigenous students due to the fact they have an intimate knowledge of the community and how it works. So I think that's that. So do we have any other questions? Awesome. I really appreciate that, gentlemen. Thank you very much.